Coming up on the county line, Newcastle remembers the one-year anniversary of the explosion that rocked the city. A small college looking for a big leader. We'll take a look as the president of Westminster College reflects on his last chance to partake at a favorite holiday festivity. And finally, the Wilmington Greyhounds continue their quest for all the glory once again as David Gregg explains in Titan Town Sports. We're live. We're local. The county line starts now. Good Thursday evening and welcome to the County Line. I'm Nikki Pizar. And I'm Pamela Marlowe. An anniversary affecting several homes in Newcastle is remembered this week. November 27th marked the first anniversary of a house explosion resulting from a suicide attempt on the residential street of Franklin Avenue. 30-year-old Patrick Henry attempted suicide by allegedly disconnecting gas lines and sealing up doors and windows in his home. The resulting explosion caused damage to a number of area homes and sent four people to the hospital. Henry will stand trial on 103 criminal counts, including arson, aggravated assaults, reckless endangerment, and causing a catastrophe. The identity of a small town is in the midst of a facelift with community reaping the benefits. The County Line's Scott Lawrence explains the status of a Volant landmark. As the giant wheel that sits in front of the town. The wheel is part of the Volant Mills. The mill has served as not only a visual statement of Volant, but was once its prime Volant economic has center as well. It's been the economic center of this town from the days when it was grinding grain and the trains came through here to pick up the grain and then move it back and forth and the farmers came into town to bring all their products into the mill, so it was the hub of activity here. The mill to this day stands as a hub of activity as well. In addition to serving as a gathering point for many, the mill also houses a small store that sells a variety of Amish goods and homemade products and toys. Our toys that are in here are all American wooden toys, like no lead paint, anything like that. You don't need no batteries, no joysticks, anything like that. But time has taken its toll on the building and it was obvious repairs needed to be made. The building sort of lost some of its charm and was in need of repairs and fortunately a year ago um, the Volant Community Economic Development Corporation was formed and between private grants and state grants was able to buy it. So with the proper funding and a little Amish help, the repairs on the mill finally began. The mill was in need of several repairs such as replacing 10 30-foot beams and a total restructuring of the entire building. In addition, renovations to the basement are being made in order to add a new water tank which is key to operating the mill. They have to put in a stock tank. It's a water tank basically and it's controlled with the mill race right here. Mm -hmm. And it's a water tank, a holding tank to put the water turbines in to use the water pressure to grind, to make the stone grind. And after all of the hard work, results are finally starting to show. Since that time, we've done, it's only been a year, but we're pretty proud of everything we've accomplished in that time. I'm Scott Lawrence for the County Line. Looking for a cute and cuddly friend to complete your family for the holidays? We'll take you to the perfect place to finish your holiday shopping. They um, have the name Blaze. That's a black dog with a white chest. I don't think Blaze fits. We'll find, find a name for him. I was over at a friend's house, and she had a really nice dog. I always liked him. I'm like, you know what, I gotta go get another dog. And, and you go online, and, and you can go on petfinder.com and look at probably a thousand different dogs. <laughs> I'm a volunteer, but that is the payment uh, in being able to help that one special animal and find it uh, a place in society where it's going to be treated the way that it should be. After that animal comes in, we uh, 
give it a few days to see, you know, if it's going to show any symptoms. Bathe it, get rid of the fleas and the ticks, which we see a lot. The other thing is when that animal is adopted, it receives its shots, it's wormed, and it's bathed again, and it is recommended that the new owner see it within three days. We have an appointment made with the vet, and we do check, and we check references when people adopt an animal. We don't just give it away. People don't appreciate things that you just hand it over to them for nothing, but most of the time it works out. I just saw this one on, on the uh, website. I've always been partial to labs. Eh, he's probably gonna make a mess in my house. Um, well, that's, you know, that goes with the territory you clean up after. It's just a very, very good experience. Unfortunately, an early start to the deer season for some local drivers as a number of vehicle accidents involving deer were reported in Lawrence County. The Pennsylvania Game Commission advises motorists to use caution while driving. And with deer rifle season now in full swing, the commission reminds hunters to use safety precautions while also in the woods. With hunter education training available, incidents have decreased by 80%. The deer season continues through December 8th. Still to come on the county line, security goes political on the campus of Westminster College. Twinkling lights and cheery carols fill the November air as the college lights up the night. Stay tuned, more county line is on the way. What are you doing out here? Straightening my hair. But why are you doing it next to your car? Oh, I just like to listen to the radio when I get ready in the morning, and this is the only one I have. You know you can listen to Titan Radio online, don't you? Are you kidding me? Titan Radio plays the hits you want. The best music from the 80s to today. Also on TitanRadio.net. Come on, boy. Come on. What do you got there, Yogi? Huh? What do you found? What do you got, little fella? Drop it. Looks like someone's butt. Man, they probably lost it playing with their kids. Hey, leave it. Come on. Come on. What's that? Check it out, Dave. What do you got there, Dave? Looks like someone's thunder thighs. They must have lost them playing in the snow with their kids. Let's get back to work. A popular, festive, and family-friendly event prances onto stage this weekend at the Newcastle Scottish, Scottish Rite Cathedral. For over 20 years, Newcastle Regional Ballet Company performs the Nutcracker, complete with area dancers, and the tradition continues with shows at 7.30 this Saturday and a 2 p.m. matinee performance on Sunday. For more information or to purchase tickets for the Nutcracker, contact 724-652-1822. It was a cold evening, but the conversation and hot cocoa warmed the hearts of those who celebrated a bright Westminster holiday tradition. President Williamson narrates as he rekindles the memories of the Christmas tree lighting. I, I look forward to it uh, as kind of the beginning of the Christmas season on campus, a chance to uh, interact with students and, and kind of see them in action, which is uh, always lots of fun, and hear them in action too, you know, the singing and, and the instrumental work and whatnot. We seek peace, the gentle and persistent peace, the one that calls out of the violent forces and lets God's spirit in. The uh, Light Up Night began 15 to 20 years or so ago. Then, at the time, I think they planted a tree, beat the tree, uh, in honor of, uh, or in memory of Bill Blackburn's wife, uh, who passed away. Bill Blackburn was the head of physical plant here. Then when I got here almost 11 years ago, there was no ceremony. 
And then Beth Brooks, who works over in the uh, Office of Student Affairs, told me one day about how it used to be and how it was a nice thing for the community and a nice thing for the, for the college. And so maybe six or seven years ago, we reinstituted it, we lighted the tree. And we seek hope in a world where there is so much hopelessness. And I have to say that, that uh, Chaplain Jim Moore has done a lot, along with Father Phil and, and um, others, to you know really uh, make this an important part of the, the year at, at, uh, at Westminster. I think it's important to have community events where we gather, we have fellowship, we have a bit of worship. Doesn't matter what your faith tradition is, you can come out and celebrate the beginning of the Advent season in this case uh, with the lighting of the Christmas tree and it allows it to be a fun event where you go back to your dorm and you get back into the books or go back to the library, but you feel a sense of warmth and, and excitement as you realize there's a whole lot more to life than just studying, but that's a big chunk of it but there's also your faith and you have an opportunity to grow in your faith. So I think it was a great, great night. I do think that uh, the lighting of the tree and the ceremony itself is a chance to just stop prior to all the craziness and reflect on the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Christ. No, no, what, I, what I'm trying to do sort of throughout the year is um, remember in every event, whether it's commencement or light up night or whatever it is that's the last of, it's really not about me, it's about whatever's going on. And, and so I'm just going to treat it like any other year. And, uh, you know, when I announced my retirement, I told people I wasn't going to make any goodbye speeches. And uh, so I'm not. <laughs> You know, Pam, I went to the Christmas tree lighting, and it was so much fun hanging out with all my friends, and I really enjoyed the cookies, too. They were pretty oh, good. I'm sure you did. <laughs> but it was nice that President Williamson gets to uh, spend a little quality time with students who may be graduating this fall or, or whatnot. So it's nice to see him out. Yeah, it definitely was. He read a Bible passage, and it just seemed like he really enjoyed himself. Mm -hmm. It truly was an extra special tree lighting ceremony as President Williamson plans to retire at the end of the school year. The college is currently hosting the finalists for the next president of the school. Dr. Richard Dorman, Vice President of Institutional Advancement at Otterbein College in Ohio, shared his vision for Westminster as he visited with faculty and students this past Monday. The second presidential candidate, Dr. Jeffrey Bullock, will visit the campus community tomorrow. Dr. Bullock currently serves as the president of the Un University of Dubuque, Dubuque in Iowa. A third presidential candidate has yet to be named, but will make an appearance next Friday, December 7th. In addition to a presidential opening on campus, the Dean of Security will also be leaving his position at the end of the semester. The County Line's Christina Rosetto sits down with Dean John Lechner to discuss his decision to enter politics. Good evening. I'm talking this evening with John Lechner. He's the Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and oversees campus security and safety here at Westminster College. And he's also the newly elected Republican Commissioner of the Mercer County Board of Commissioners. And prior to Westminster, he served in the U.S. Army and Air Force as well as the Pennsylvania State Police Force. John Lechner, thank you for being with us this evening. It's very nice to be here. Um, we're talking about you being elected as a new commissioner, but before we get into that, what drew you to Westminster after your career with the Pennsylvania State Police? Well, I was friends with Paul Darlington, and when I retired from the State Police, I didn't have a job. I just uh, pulled away from the state because I felt that it was a younger man's work to be done. And uh, one day I was talking to Paul, and he let me know that he was going to be leaving, and so I applied for the job. He said he thought it would fit my skills, and I agree that it did. And what did you do at um, the state police that maybe either qualified you for here at Westminster, or did anything play in or factor into you getting the job here at Westminster that you took from the state police? Oh, I'm sure that quite a bit of it did. Uh, did many things within the state police. I was a, uh, a patrol officer 
a uh, criminal investigation supervisor, a staff supervisor, a station commander. Uh, so there was a number of things I did, uh, media relations, I was a spokesperson on, on major cases, all kinds of things. And the public safety department here seemed to be a good fit for a lot of those skills. Mm -hmm. So why student affairs and public safety? You just talked about your experience at the state police. Were, were you drawn to working with the students here at Westminster, maybe taking your skills from there, from the state police? Well, when I applied for the job, I knew that it was going to involve both. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I thought that uh, my background in the military and in the state police gave me a lot of leadership. And you know, the college has the philosophy of the education of the whole person. And I thought that my leadership skills could be applied to possibly mentoring some of our students and helping along young men uh, that are affiliated with the fraternities and things of that sort. Teaching them skills and concepts that they would be able to take out into society after they graduate. Um, you just mentioned the fraternities you serve as um, a board member, I believe, on the Interfraternity Council, correct? Yes, I'm advisor to the IFC. And what, what, what job does that entail? Do you take anything that you work with for student affairs? It seems like there might be a correlation between student affairs and working with the men who are in the fraternities here at Westminster. Well, the fraternities are lined up under student affairs. Anything mm -hmm. that's related to students falls under that, all of your student organizations. And uh, <clears throat> there's quite a bit that we do. Uh, try to let the young men handle things themselves, you just sort of guide them along. Mm -hmm. Give them some ideas and some directions and hope that they'll take them and, and run with them. And what has your experience been here at Westminster? It seems like a big transition from the state police, you know, such a serious organization, not to discredit Westminster by any means, but it seems like you went from a very serious role in the state police to, you know, after your retirement coming in here to Westminster. It was a huge change in environment because in the state police everything is very black and white mm -hmm. and at a college environment things are many shades of gray. Right. And I think that being here at Westminster was a big help to me. In fact, uh, one of the former uh, deans here, John Deegan, said to me after I was here about six or eight months, how are you enjoying Westminster College? And I said, I think it's fantastic. And I said, I'm truly enjoying it. And he says, well, you know what? I think you're correct because the face you're wearing today isn't the face you wore in the door <laughs> eight or nine months ago. I think you just had that don't mess with me look on your face as a right. police officer. And uh, hopefully uh, my experiences at Westminster have rounded me and mellowed me a little bit. So switching gears a little bit here, you talked about your experience at Westminster. What motivated you to seek an active role in um, politics? I live in Mercer County, mm -hmm. and I haven't been happy with the direction I've seen county government going in. Mm -hmm. And so many people have the tendency to say, somebody needs to do something. And I said the same thing. And again, when I looked at the credentials that I could bring to the position, I felt, you know what, you're probably as well a qualified somebody as anyone else. Why don't you get out and do it? And that was a big motivator for me. So talking about that, uh, you know, you, you're going to be the person that's going to actually go out and do something. Uh, what goals do you hope to achieve as a commissioner? Well, I have two. You know, commissioner's role is somewhat limited. You're primarily a fiscal administrator and manager. You know, they have over 500 employees in the county and uh, about a $68 million budget that you have to oversee. And you've got to make sure that you stay within that budget. But yet, at the same time, you have to support all of the operations that go on, and many of the things that come down to the county level are state and federally mandated, but they're not funded. Right. And so you've got to figure out how to make it all happen. Um, do you plan to take anything with you from Westminster or your career with the state police or even your, you know, your time in the U.S. Army and the Air Force with you as you embark on this new endeavor as a commissioner? I'm going to take it all. I mean, each each one of those venues gave me some different skills. I think I'm taking a lot of uh, ethics and integrity with me from both the state police and from the military, uh, leadership skills, speaking abilities, and I think from Westminster, I'm taking now the ability to work better with committees and groups 
and a lot more flexibility than what I might have had right. nine or ten years ago. And wrapping it up, um, you're going to be the only re Republican in a Democratic-controlled uh, council. How do you feel as being the Republican and you know going along with w with your goals? How do you look at, at working with your colleagues on um, you know any issues that may arise? I'm in absolutely County? committed to working with my colleagues. I have to work with them in order to get things done. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change any of my goals or any of my ideas. The only thing that's going to change, perhaps, is how I approach the issues. Right. Um, we've been talking today with John Lechner. Um, as we said, he will be retiring from Westminster College and moving on to his new position as uh, Commissioner, Re Republican Commissioner of Mercer County. Mr. Lechner, thank you for taking your time out of your day to be with us today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. We will be back with more County Line after this. R-E-C-Y-C-L-E, it begins with you and me. Recycling grocery bags is catching on. Here's my favorite. Let's reduce packaging by getting one big bottle, and it's recyclable. Ooh, this box is heavy. Oh, we'll get this small container of concentrate instead. It's recyclable, too. Now that's smart shopping. Less packaging and more recyclables. Oh, we're back. Has your child overdrawn their account more than once? Does their credit card spending seem to be out of control? They may be ruining their credit and their future. If you know someone that needs to learn how to budget their expenses before they get out into the real world, come to the Consumer Credit Counseling Service. They're a nonprofit organization that offers free sessions to learn how to budget effectively and help you get out of debt. Consumer Credit Counseling Service, offering financial help in any crisis. score and seven years ago think history is a little scary then log on to loc.gov and see how much fun it can be the library of congress at loc.gov good evening i'm david gregg and welcome to titan town sports tis the season for basketball here at westminster and we would see if the boys could begin their season with a win as they matched up against bluffton in the first round of the buzz Rizzle classic Westminster with a home court advantage for this game, and it would start off early. David Richards is going to go coast to coast and lay it in for two. And Richards now dishing it to Craig Hanna, who's going to go up, get two, and one. Times would pull closer, but Colt Cunningham for Bluffton. Come across midcourt and hit the J to go up by three with time running out. Max Spinner now for the Titans, hits the three. Still trailing by three at this point. Some last minute effort now from Craig Hannon is going to put it up, try and beat the buzzer, not get it. Titans would fall and go 0 and 1 as it would lose 79 to 82. We're now going to give out the honors of SAC Athlete of the Week. And the honors go to senior guard and forward Emily Ackerman, who put up some career numbers against Pitt Bradford as the Lady Titans came out on top 96 to 74. Emily finished with 30 points and 10 rebounds, making this her second straight game with a double-double. And since we're talking about Titan athletes winning awards, we're going to give out for the first time ever the Standout Player Award. This award goes to senior D lineman Dan Orson, who not only put forth an incredible effort in the four years of football, but also an incredible effort in the classroom with his near 4.0 GPA. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but when you check out your thermometer outside, you may be thinking football weather, certainly not soccer weather. Well, Wilmington High School is thinking soccer as they played host to the third annual Mercer Lawrence County Senior All-Star Soccer Game. This game would mark the last time these players step onto the field as members of a high school team. One player would say just how much this game really means. Contact 
Um, it was just an honor to make the team because they picked the best people from each school and it was an honor to represent our school. The game showcased the best seniors of Mercer and Lawrence County. But just how much of a difference does that make? It's nice because all 11 players that you're playing with are strong, so therefore it gives you better opportunities. The boys would also get their chance on the field, and while the game was competitive, Coach Brian Livenspire would explain it also unites these schools. It's just a good time. I mean, the kids, once the kids walk across the white line, they're all competitive, but they, and uh, I think it goes a long way to create camaraderie between the schools that have been battling all year long. Following the games, eight players were chosen and given a $500 scholarship, including Kaitlin Badger and Cindy Casino of Wilmington. And speaking of Wilmington, the football hounds are beginning a quest for their t state title this Friday as they travel to Mansion State Park in Altoona to play Bishop McCourt. The Greyhounds won the District 10 AA title as they beat Harbor Creek 18 to 6. And now let's take a look at some upcoming Titan action. The men's and women's swim team are currently at the Wooster Invitational that began tonight and will run until Saturday. Women's and the men's basketball teams will be at home Saturday against St. Vincent. The girls beginning at 2 while the guys at will be at 4. And now it's time for extra innings. The Steelers will uh, play host this week to the Bengals, trying to put on more than three points this week and hopefully getting a pass to Heath Miller for some fantasy points for years truly. The Browns will travel down to Arizona to try and keep their hot streak going. And a big game this Saturday, the annual backyard brawl pit against West Virginia. A big game for West Virginia if they lose, although highly unlikely, will lose their bid at a national title. And that will wrap it up for Titan Town Sports this week. Stay tuned, more County Line is on the way. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. The Lawrence County Humane Society believes in the safety of spaying and neutering your animals. Spaying and neutering can have many long-term benefits. Uh, we at the Lawrence County Humane Society believe that all animals should be spayed or neutered. Uh, many, many reasons why, but uh, the biggest reason is that they will be a happier, healthier pet. Also, it alleviates the overpopulation problem. Getting your animals spayed and neutered is one huge step in making sure that more animals are healthy and find loving homes. There's a better way to have fun with history. It's okay, Amelia. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. On three. One. Yes! Two. Welcome back. We'll get back to that story we began earlier on senior, quarter, uh, senior football player Dan Orison. Every Division III athlete faces challenges, and Dan Orson is no exception. He's not academically impaired or athletically impaired, but Dan Orson is hearing impaired. A two-sport athlete who has a near 4.0 grade point average, Dan's hearing impairment doesn't keep him from succeeding on and off the field. What keeps me motivated is, for academics, it's just wanting to be successful in life. Uh, without calling a degree, I can't get anywhere, so I just keep pushing myself and trying to be successful where I can do now so I can be ten times more successful later. Mm -hmm. And for athletics, athletics it's the, for the love of the game. I mean, I just, I just keep working hard and keep doing everything just for, because I love football. It's just so passionate, the hitting, the strategy, everything. Dean's work ethic keeps him going, not just here on the football field, but also in the classroom. A top-notch student, Dan participates in many athletic and also academic activities. The biggest thing I lose is sleep. sleep. You, try and, you try and balance everything from social activities to track and football. 
Uh, you can't do everything all the time. You have to rely on other people understanding what, you, what you're trying to do and hopefully they let you, if you can't to go to one practice, hopefully they understand and so far everybody's been pretty great here. Dan puts in the same hours as every other athlete here at Westminster. His constant dedication to athletics and academics makes him a truly remarkable person. For Titan Town Sports, I'm Christina Rosetto. That's all the time we have left this week. Join us again next week for our final show of the semester. Until then, have a good night. Stay warm. Good night. Ventilation introduces large amounts of outside air into the indoor environment while at the same time exhausting equivalent or just less than those indoor uh, volumes. Ventilation can be accomplished either naturally using natural forces or using mechanical systems. Although it's easy to implement natural systems, it's very hard to control and very unpredictable results.